Tonight we're going to be making some meatloaf. I got most of the ingredients right here, pre-prepared, pre-pre-prepared them for ya. So it go a little faster, but of course I'm still going to include some of my awesome tip cooking skills and show them to you right here, and away we go. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the breadcrumb mixtures. I used half a cup of panko and half a cup of Italian breadcrumbs because I'm from New Jersey. And then you're going to add a couple eggs and I think some salt and some pepper. You'll see the whole thing go down right here. So I made the breadcrumbs and forgot to tape the making of it. So anyways, you put the breadcrumbs, mix them up with your little eggs and your chicken broth, that's a half a cup of chicken broth, and then one cup of breadcrumbs. Put to the side and let them, let them absorb the moisture, it says. Let it absorb. And we're gonna go on to the next step. And the next step, I gotta read my little notes here. We're gonna cut some celery, we'll cut cut up some garlic and some, and some onion. We cook up our celery and our onion, but first we gotta cut it up. So we're gonna cut it up next, and that's what you get to see. I will record it this time, I promise. the onions and the celery are. It just almost made a tear come to my eye. So you dice the celery, you dice the onion, warm a teaspoon or so of EVOO. That's extra virgin olive oil for those who don't know. We're gonna saute these. I think we throw in a little bit of garlic, but I'll double check. We do add garlic, one teaspoon, one tablespoon. I'm gonna add a little extra because I always like garlic. I wanted to tell you a special little thing about it. A while back, a long time ago, my mom bought me this garlic cutter. I use it all the time, I've had it for years. Now normally there's a little lid right here. I've since lost the lid, which is a bummer, but it's like a little Pac-Man. You open her up, and then you take your little garlics and you put them in there, like, you know, a half a clove or two, and then you close the lid like this and you let it snap or you would close the lid. Now what I have to do is I, I cover the hole like this and then you'll run it along the wall or the countertop or you know, the wall. I didn't mean the wall, the countertop, you know, and then it grinds it and mints it perfectly. I'll show you here now. We're gonna, I'm gonna adjust the cameras. The next thing we're gonna do, a little bit, adjust it. We're gonna warm up some oil in the pan. So medium heat on the skillet here. A little bit of oil, <clears throat> EVOO. And the recipe says we're gonna put the garlic in there. We're gonna cook it or saute it or whatever it is we're doing to it until it's fragrant. And I'll tell you, it's fragrant right now. It smells delicious. And then we add our celery. It's a half a cup of celery. I'm adding a little more because because I'm extra. And it asks for three quarters cup of onions. So I'm improvising here with. What I, I do what I want, I do what I want. And one tablespoon of garlic, it's a little overexposed there, we'll bring it back here. Yeah, it smells delicious. And then maybe we'll throw a little salt and pepper, I don't know, we'll just play it by ear. Here we go. Onions and the celery and the garlic, and it said just basically until tender. And the recipe says to set whoa, stay on camera, just 
The recipe says to hold, please. Technical difficulties. Okay, now this now. So the recipe says to put them on a plate and let them cool before we add them to our meat. So I asked uh, Chip if he was up for the job, and he's totally in. And we're gonna let him help us out. Get these off the fire. Fire, whatever. Yes. It's electric. It's electric. Do, 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 do. It's electric. Do, 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 do. It's electric. But this is what it looks like. The onions are slightly browned. Oh my gosh, can you see that steam coming off? It's gorgeous. The steam is gorgeous. So we want to let that steam cool off. I'm telling you, it smells absolutely scrumptious. It smells like Thanksgiving. This is the beginnings as well for a Thanksgiving turkey stuffy. Onions, garlic, and celery. So there's staples around the house, folks. Staples. Tip number one. Staples. We're going to prepare our meatloaf. So I grab the meat. The recipe says, how much meat do I got? 16 ounces of meat. No, I didn't even pay attention to the meat. I just knew I had this much and I was making meatloaf. So hopefully all the ingredients I just made are not for more meat. And the usual, so wash your hands. It's recommended to wash your hands after you handle any raw meat. All right, so we're gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Fly like a sparrow, fly like a dove. There must be a reason, I don't know the words. Oh, what a feeling. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. And it go over very well. Stir it up a little bit. It looks like it's a little juicy on top. You can always add a little more if you think you need to before you start cooking it. We're gonna do two teaspoons of Soy sauce. There's one. There's two. I was a little heavy handed on that one there. And we're going to do one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. How do you say it? Worcestershire? Worcester? Worcestershire? Worcestershire? God bless you. So that's one. We want one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to do one teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to do the same thing here and just kind of run it off because I don't know about paprika. It says it can be sweet or smoky paprika. Mine is browned. Hope that's acceptable. One teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm not being super generous because I don't like too much salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And it says a tablespoon of parsley. It says chopped, but I'm just going to sprinkle in this dried stuff. They asked for a cup of Parmesan cheese. I didn't have any, so I happen to have a Caesar salad in my fridge. I reduce, reuse, and recycle, folks. That's what we do here. We reduce, reuse, recycle. Tip number two. If you don't have an ingredient, look for it in your to-go foods or your leftovers. You might find it there. And because I love cheese, and it's asking for a cup. I don't want to skip, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw in some of this feta cheese. Something new. Let's try it. Just sprinkle a little feta cheese in there like that, and then it's asking for your breadcrumbs. So these are breadcrumbs. They've taken up the moisture. Go ahead and throw that in there. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. The last ingredient it's asking for is a half a teaspoon, a tablespoon, I don't know, of thyme. But I don't have any. I'm all out of thyme. There's just not enough thyme. Fresh out of thyme. That's enough, Jess. Stop. Just okay. to gently mix. Not to overwork it. Gently mix your meat. We learned that in the last episode. You don't want to work too hard on the meat. You just kind of want to gently... Squish it in there together. But you do want to thoroughly mix it. Mix it together. Cohabitate, you know. Once you get your meat mixed up, you're going to go ahead and put the meat in the bacon loaf. 
and we're going to lightly grease the bottom of the bacon lump and wash my hands because it's time to wash my hands. So I went back and I reviewed the recipe. And upon reviewing the recipe, I did find out that it needs two pounds of meat and we only have one pound and the rest of the ingredients are exactly to the scale. So I don't even know what's gonna happen when I put this in the oven, but we gotta prepare this bar. It's all messed up and it's okay. My mom used to say, you don't cry over the spilled milk. So we're not gonna cry, at least not on camera. look like you want to whoa should be sliding all over the place I don't know what we're gonna get it's probably gonna be mush Lord let's pray over this meatloaf that it turns out all right I mean on national television there's millions of people watching this show and I just pray the Lord that this comes out okay and on top of it all have it taste delicious so I'm gonna treat it as though I did it correctly and what you're supposed to do is press your meat down firmly into the bottom and around on the side so you get that little tiny little hump which you can barely see because there's not enough meat in this one. Sorry folks, but okay, so Ross, so Ross, sometimes I make mistakes. So it's like my first one in a really long time. We're gonna throw it in the oven at 400 degrees for says 45 to 55 minutes, but obviously since it's half as much, it's probably gonna be half as long, so we'll just have to watch it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna make, um, and correctly, because we're gonna just keep following the recipe, because I don't have time to split it up now. Fresh out of time. Seriously, I don't have time. I'm gonna make the tangy sauce. It says to take a third a cup of maple syrup, but you use what you got, so we're just doing regular syrup, so I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Why do they give me a cooking show? quicker they'll cook and the crispier they get. And it happens to be cornstarch that makes them crispy. Thank you, Jerry. And this should be at 400. Okay, the meatloaf's been in for 20 minutes. It's definitely not ready. For another 15 and watch it. In time, I'm gonna hold. What do you guys think I should do? Should I hold on the potatoes or should I put them in? Not quite sure what to do. I guess I could get them started. Since we're not following the recipe tonight, really, we're just doing what we want, apparently. Not reading directions, just throwing whatever we want. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in. So, top shelf, y'all, top shelf. You know how I roll. Only top shelf for me. Champagne taste on a fair budget, y'all. Ooh, it's hot in here. Degrees and them sweet potatoes at 400 degrees and they're gonna go for 14 minutes as long as the meatloaf's in there. I'm gonna check on the meatloaf in 15 minutes and then we'll check the potatoes at the same time. Okay, folks, just enjoy yourselves for now. It smells delicious in here. Like home cooking. potato check. This one is the older one. I'm gonna spiral it up and make it into veggie sketty. This one I'm gonna cut in half 
And I'm still gonna, is it roast it, bake it? I'm gonna bake it. And I'm hoping that the veggie scatty will get crunchy. I love crunch, y'all. I love crunch, I love cheese. And what was the other thing I like? Cheese, oh, sauce, <laughs> sauce, how do I forget sauce? So I love cheese, sauce, and crunch. I'm always in a game for making things crunchy. So I may throw a little cornstarch on top of my sketty, my veggie sketty once I make it. Once I sketty it up through the noodle maker. And I think I may throw a little onion on there and make almost like onion rings, but they'll be onion half rings and they just won't be dipped up at it, which is healthy for you. Tip number two, healthy for you. Let's check our meat and our taters. Woo! It's hot coming out of there. So our taters are looking good. meat thermometer and it said between 130 and 140 degrees. I don't even know how to use this thing. We saw that in the last episode. I'm putting it right in the center. It's really mushy so I don't feel like it's not going to be Let your babies grow up to be cowboys. I think it's done. It's brown on the top but what you do before it's finished, you're going to take it out. Drain the juices. So we're gonna drain the juices. Mama, don't let your babies grow up and be cowboys. So, and then it says to put your oven up to um, 500. So the temperature up to 500, but we're gonna watch our potatoes. So we're gonna just leave them in there at this temperature and watch them. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. And you take your tangy sweet glaze after you mix the juice, separate the juices. And this tomato paste syrup, a couple other items, and you just kind of brush it on there like this. Just over the top, brush it. The sides are turning nice and brown, so we like that. And then you're gonna throw this sucker back in for three minutes. We're gonna do multiple layers of our glaze. Nice and pretty. Throw that sucker back in, and we're gonna do three minutes. Grow up to be cowboys. Well, cowboys if they're gonna wear Wrangler jeans, cause Wrangler butts drive me nuts. Our glaze is ready. We're gonna take it out and do a second coat. I'm gonna check our taters first. These are probably done. One of them brown and crunch. I don't know if we're gonna get that with a sweet potato. Not being very sweet potato. Another set of glaze on this sucker right here. Gonna brush it on again. You're just gonna put it back in another three minutes. Three, three layers of the sauce. I love sauce. Okay, it's time to take it out again, your meatloaf. Time to take it out, put the last coat on. It's looking glazy, delicious, yummers. Maybe this won't turn out so bad. This last time is three to five minutes. And I'm gonna throw in um, the squash with the onions, which I prepared while the three minutes was going fast, hot. I just threw them on with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. That's my go-to. Oh, there we go, they tested it nicely. To be honest, I think I'm going to throw some cornstarch on the squash because I want the veggies to really crisp up. That's my hope. Cross your fingers. So the potatoes crisped up pretty nice. A few pieces are bread, but that's okay. Oh yeah. Yum. Guess what time it is? It's time to take the meat out. Ooh, it looks delicious. Look at this. Yes, queen. Now we may have used half the meat and all the rest of the ingredients, but that looks good. Tasting it is gonna be a different story. 
once the onions and the squash come out of the oven, it's time to plate it dinner. Okay, so everything's out of the oven, so now it's time to plate it. Plate it! And there you have it. Messed up meatloaf with the wrong amount of meat and the rest of everything else. Some sweet potatoes, some squash with some onions. Not by HelloFresh, just by Desi Nut. Desi's Delicious Dinners. Enjoy. So dinner was delicious. A little tiny mushy, I guess, on the meat. So definitely better if I had the right amount of meat, but um, very flavorful. Delicious. There you go, folks. We don't need HelloFresh. 